Hello everyone, thanks for stopping by. This is Fong and I'm here with another message that will hopefully help inspire you forward. In this video, I'd like to share with you the first reason why I think people fail in direct sales. Droopy Roots! I was speaking to a friend of mine in direct sales recently who is trying really hard to get me to say out loud that direct sales doesn't work. I think she was going through a uh, pity party mode and was in search of someone to commiserate with. And I was annoying her to no end because I was not going to give her what she was looking for. Here's what I've learned in the last 16 years about direct sales. It works. It just doesn't work all the time. But what does? Life comes at us in tides. I heard something once that stayed in my mind and it helps me every time I have bad days. A top producer for our company once said in her speech that the tide comes in and then the tide goes right back out. That one line has been in my mind for the last decade and I was trying really hard to share this one truthism with my friend, but she wasn't having it. So I decided to share it with you because, well, you can't really talk back at me. That'd be scary. This conversation with my friend got me thinking, what is it about direct sales that can produce millionaires on one end and people working for years without reaching the same level of success on the other? I think I may have some insight and I'd like to share them with you. There are so many reasons why people struggle in life, period, let alone direct sales. This is going to be the first in a whole series of videos dedicated to giving you some virtual pep talks on this topic. So today's video is not going to cover the top 100 reasons why people fail. I'm just going to share with you one of the big ones and I'm going to try really hard to bust a few myths in the next few videos in this series. Why do people fail at direct sales? One of the big reasons, in my opinion, is not dedicating enough time and not dedicating it consistently enough. Most people either are not able to dedicate enough time because of other responsibilities or distractions. I know people are busy, but I think the devil has a lot to do with that. I bet he has loads of fun distracting us and then deceiving us into living some crazy lives. But I digress. Some people lose their passion because of lack of knowledge or being impatient. If you're just playing with direct sales and only want to have fun, then don't worry about it. If the thought of dedicating time is giving you palpitations, turn off the video. This message is not relevant to you. But if you want to really do something in direct sales, then listen up. Most people go into direct sales on a very part-time basis or they start strong and stall out too soon. That's the failure right there. Think about it, guys. If you work a normal job where you go in 40 hours a week, if you're able to give your business half the time at 20 hours a week, then it would take you two years in your business before you can even match a normal job. And if people give less than 20 hours a week, well, you can do the math then, right? Let's look at direct sales earnings. It takes a newbie about a month of training to feel okay about going out and making a presentation. Again, I know some people do it on their first day and most people probably should, but let's just use one month to be safe. Then it takes another month oh, to actually get out there, hold a few appointments and see how it goes. Because what do you do? You mess with your psyche and you stall for silliness. But anyways, okay, so go back to your first two months and calculate how much did you make based on how much you sold. I think you might be pleasantly surprised. And here's the cherry on top of this whole money-making milkshake. I am a big advocate of using direct sales as a means to make more money in addition to your job. You're double dipping. So if you're working a job and you're growing a direct sales business, then you're in the sweet spot of making extra money to invest. Check out my video on how to be debt free to learn more about that. If your desire is to achieve freedom from a job or to reach a more enjoyable lifestyle, where you can control your hours, then it is even more important for you to focus right now to get your direct sales business spinning. Once you're at a place where your earnings are equal to or more than your current job, and if you're able to sustain it on a consistent basis where you can responsibly leave your job, then I say go for it. As a side note, I'd love to send an invitation out for mothers to come home if you can, and for fathers to stay close if you can. Our children need us. We are more than just their physical guardians. We are their emotional and spiritual protectors as well. When we are distracted, we unintentionally and unknowingly leave them open as easier prey. Our babies, no matter how big they get, are wonderful reasons to dig in and set taproots deep in our lives. 
If you choose to turn off the television and step away from your electronic devices, you'll be amazed how much time you have, even if you're working a full-time job and growing a direct sales business. I remember when my kids were very young that if I focused just two minutes, yep, 120 seconds of completely dedicated and devoted attention to them, they are filled by that attention and then they take off to play. Don't believe me? Go time yourself. Hit pause on this video, turn off any background electronics, anything that's going on right now, turn them off. Go to a quiet place and do nothing for two minutes. Don't even look at the timer on your phone and keep your eyes open. You've got to keep your eyes open for this to work. Focus on something that's not moving, not even the cursor on your screen if you're in front of your computer. And now, count to 120 slowly. <laughs> That was pretty long, right? Did you find yourself wanting to count faster towards the end? It's pretty amazing how time can be twisted and stolen from us by all the distractions that the devil puts in front of us in pretty little packages. Back in the day, I learned that if I am half focused on my kids, they tend to hover waiting on that focus attention. And if they don't get it, then they get annoyed and then frustrated and then it'll escalate to irritation. And by that time, no amount of time that I would give them would ever be enough. Now that they're teenagers, it seems like the roles are reversed and I have to chase them down. <laughs> but if I can just catch their attention, then the conversations are a joy. Don't let the things that matter the least be at the mercy of the things that matter the most. Anyone who's ever owned a successful business knows that they need to eat, sleep, and breathe their business. I think the problem with direct sales is that if you're part of a really good company, then they have their infrastructure so on point that it makes it pretty easy for a direct seller to do okay with putting in less time. If your company has the research and development of new and innovative fresh products done for you already, then you don't have to do it. If you've got the distribution chain of product delivery done for you, then you don't have to do that. If you've got a good name recognition, then you really don't have to advertise a lot. If you've got a legal department to cover your cute little tush, training seminars to help support your peeps on your team, all the way down to contracts with credit card processing companies to process payments for you and to do it by giving you a good rate, well, you guys, you get where I'm going with this? Many people in direct sales, I don't think stop long enough to realize how lucky they are as a business owner to only quote have to concentrate on capturing new customers and building that relationship with them. Being a part of a strong company really frees you up a lot. So some people recognize this and they appreciate it and they take full advantage of these support tools. And that's why their business flourish because they're pushing themselves even further. Whereas some people miss the point altogether and so they're just happy with the little bitty sales and just ride along on the company's coattails. Could it be that you don't have enough skin in the game to commit for the long haul? Just investing in a starter kit and then a little inventory is not skin in the game, guys. Most reputable company nowadays give you a refund on your inventory investment if you send it back to them in a certain time frame. So can you see how it's pretty easy to do just enough and then kind of let things slowly die if it doesn't go well and then before you know it, you're kind of out of the game altogether. Recently, we've been getting some really strange weather where I live. We'd have a warm day and then the next week we'd have snow. I'm a subtropical baby. I was born in Vietnam and raised in Southern California. So all the cold days over the winter where I live now has been hard on me. I think I have that weather disease. Do you guys ever get grouchy when you've gone too long without seeing the sun? My poor husband probably thinks I grow horns over the winter. Anyways, I've been willing spring to not just come but stay and usher in summer already. So I have a mini greenhouse growing in my home right now to give me a little fix. Anyone who's familiar with gardening knows that you need light and heat for seeds to germinate. And if for any reason you forget to give your new little seeds enough heat, then they could shrivel up and die. Or worse, they don't even start a sprout at all. I believe that's what's happening to a lot of direct sales businesses. Too many people come in with passion, hit a few bumps, lose their steam, and die because of the lack of consistent heat on their productivity. I'm not saying you have to turn your life upside down to make your budding business work. I would like to just encourage you to commit to a consistent long-term schedule for your business. 
If you can commit 20 hours every week for one year, watch your business grow. But if you can't, it is actually better for you to do, say, 10 hours a month every month on the same days and times than it is for you to do 40 hours one month and no hours the next. Did you know that plants do not like wet roots? I've murdered a few helpless plants in my days by watering too much. So the poor plants would droop because I was drowning them. Isn't that strange that too much water would make certain plants look like they're needing water? So when I did not see the results that I wanted, I kept doing the thing that I thought the plant wanted. Then it didn't work out, so I got discouraged from a lack of knowledge, and before I knew it, I hadn't watered in weeks. Then my poor abused plants would wilt and then die because I neglected them. Your direct sales business is the same way. There's a learning curve, and things are not always what they seem. Remember, inconsistency breeds confusion. Confusion leads to frustration, and frustrated people make poor decisions, especially when they don't know how to get out of the vicious cycle. Your business can die if you have the unhealthy habit of stopping and going and stopping and going. Are you guilty of overwatering your business, drowning your roots, seeing wilting results, getting discouraged, neglecting your business, and now it's dead? I'd like to close with a neat little story about the Chinese bamboo. You take a little seed, plant it, water it, and fertilize it for a whole year and nothing happens. The second year, you water it and fertilize it, and nothing happens. The third year, you water it and fertilize it, and nothing happens. <laughs> How discouraging, right? The fifth year, you continue to water and fertilize the seed, and then take note. Sometime during the fifth year, the Chinese bamboo tree sprouts and grows 90 feet in six weeks. Okay, guys, I love this story, and I hate this story. Here's why I hate it. Blind faith is not good. I hope that you do not read into this story and think that I'm encouraging you to blindly follow anything. Sometimes doing the same thing over and over and over again and getting the same results is bad. I believe that's the definition of insanity. This story is only good if you know that in the fifth year that this bamboo is likely to sprout 90 feet. So you can keep on going in faith, but not blindly. How would you know this? I'd go back to the person who sold me the bamboo and go, hey, hey, what's up with this? Did you sell me a dud? And have them tell me the characteristics of what to expect out of this breed. Or I'd go to someone with a whole grove of bamboos and ask, what are you doing? Here's what I'm doing. Should I keep going or do I need to dig the bamboo up? I liken blind faith versus faith based in knowledge to my love of Jesus and my faith in God. All my life I've looked for him. Many times I was mad at him. There were times my faith was shaken by people who say things like, you know you can't prove its existence. And these people are so right. I can't prove it to them. I can only prove it to myself. And I do that by having a daily relationship with Him. And I chase after Him in my prayers and my research. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Now that you know how to avoid droopy roots in your business, I hope you will decide to dig your roots in deep. Stop worrying about what's going on above the surface. Keep going and pray for faith. You can do it. If you love this video and want to make one of your own, go check out the crazy cool innovators over at GoAnimate. I've put the link to them in the description below this video for you. As of the recording of this video, they were offering a free trial for you to play with. So go check them out. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.